I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you, peace about your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, today our topic as you see the screen, we are talking about gambling. Uh, you know, today uh, YouTube recommended a video for me and I found it very interesting. And the video was from a very well-known person, his name is Ahmad Dida, who don't even speak Arabic. Yet they call him Sheikh. It's like Sheikh Uthman, he is right. You can be Sheikh without speaking Arabic. So here, a Christian person, he says to him, well, what Quran, what, what Quran can do? I mean, you are coming to debate the Christians, but what your Quran can do? So, do that, you have an answer. He silenced all the Christians. I'm that. So look, Islam, through the Quran, through this one verse, it eliminated four major evils. One verse. I quote Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ya you Ladinamanu. So oh you who believe in Namal Hamru, most certainly intoxicants, while Maisiru and gambling, while Ansabu and fortune telling, while Aslamu and idol worship, Rizumil Shaitan are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Fajtani Buhul Allah Kum to Flihum. When this verse was revealed, wine barrels were emptied in the streets of Medina, never to be revealed. The most perfect, complete and lasting revolution in the history of mankind. One verse and the evil was abolished for good. <laughs> if we go to the verse we, we, he is mentioning, we will see that even the Quran did not even forbid alcohol. And actually Muhammad was copying whole in first first corinthian chapter 6 and we will go there but let us go here and see what the quran already saying remember one verse eliminate all evil in this world you will notice that the quran even did not say that it is forbidden neither gambling neither alcohol neither idolatry Neither any of those are forbidden. It says, which means avoid them. And there's a huge difference between avoid them and it's forbidden. Avoid them mean, as try your best to avoid them. Hmm? It's not a sin. It is not a sin. And I will open my Skype soon and I will ask the Muslims what is the punishment for gambling or for drinking. Now for sure they will say to me the Hadith, right? One verse eliminated all four evil. One of them is gambling, one of them is fortunate, fortune teller, one of them is a drinking, but do you know that Muslim, they can do gambling over horses or camels? 
and they are forbidden to do play chess. This is the gambling they are talking about. You see, when they say gambling, you think it's really gambling. You want to translate the word gambling here. This is about playing chess. You know, like you know those uh, like Persian games. All of them they are Persian games, like the one you use the what they call it. The one have numbers. But those are people they play just for fun, including chess. If we go right now to the Hadith, and this is telling you that Muhammad is really evil. Ali used to say that the chess is a, mis a misser of the foreigners, okay? A misser of the foreigners. It's the, it's the gambling of the foreigners. <laughs> but this is not gambling, you know? And then he continues saying here that nobody play chess except the sinner. Nobody play, play chess except the sinner. Let me show you more hadith about this. So you can laugh. So we can gamble using money, real money, over horses, over camels. And the Muslim, they say, oh, this is because it helped for jihad. <laughs> Look at the excuse. Uh, let us uh, find some reference. Let us read this one. This one is good and showing you how, how mental Muhammad is. And this is Sahih. So they cannot say to you, this is weak and you know, this game. He who played Narchir, which is actually, uh, you know, you know, like the, this table, you know, like they open it, you have, you, they play it in Turkey and many other places. The one who do that, he is the same as somebody, his hands is in the swine meat and the blood of the swine. This is in the hadith, but this is not gambling. And this has nothing to do with gambling. We go to different hadith. All of those actually, like this one is Sahih. So the Muslim cannot say to us, uh, this is uh, accepted, this is rejected, and you know, you know the game. Uh, let us see different hadith. Just to show you how they try to fool people about what is forbidden in Islam. What's wrong with playing this game? What's exactly the problem? You see, gambling is something different. Gambling is you put bit money over anything. We, we can gamble over anything. We do not need to play game. You can say, if it rains tomorrow, what do you think? I bet it's going to rain tomorrow. Do you bet against me? <laughs> Gambling is something different. So the, 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 the stupidity is beyond imagination. And Muslims, obviously, when they translate the Quran, they don't even know what they are translating. Nowhere even the word gambling is mentioned in the Quran. As you see, this is not gambling. What does this have to do with gambling? And how this is, can be gambling? And if we forbid gambling, then we forbid the act of gambling, not the, the, not the game. The game itself is not a gambling. 
Chess is not a gambling. So what does this have to do? with gambling. If we go to different reference, let's see. <clears throat> uh, let us see if we can find this one. This is about chess. Here it says Ibn Omar when he found the blah 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 playing, and you see here they are they are talking about uh, two games actually, not only, uh, not only chess, uh, chess and uh, playing with this. Uh, uh, let me let me show you a picture so you can know what I'm talking about. And actually, the funny is. This is the very popular game in all over Islamic countries. And then the Muslim, they say it's forbidden. So why you play it then if it's forbidden? If it's forbidden, why you play it? Obviously it's not. This is the game we are talking about. I'm sure now many of you knows what I'm talking about. You know, I'm trying just to find the word for it, uh, uh, which I don't know in English. Uh, so this has nothing to do with gambling, unless you, you know, you bet, uh, in a, but this is, can be happening for anything. If you go uh, for hunting, if you say, uh, if I get a tiger first, I, I win and you pay me, etc. This is gambling. So it's, uh, gambling is a different story. So here you see that the, the, the illusion and the uh, misleading in the Islamic translation when they translate the Quran. And then he says here that the one who played chess, nobody played chess except someone he is a sinner. There's no good in chess, but the chess is a, is a game, will make you smarter, teach you how to have patience, how to think, how to be careful, how to be a patient, uh, how to uh, plan for things. It's a very, very, very healthy game. Which, so what, we, what, what a human should do? You see, music is forbidden, chess is forbidden, this game is forbidden, so what is left? What's exactly left? Sex. Sex and food. So when the Muslim, they bring to us those verses and they mention the word gambling, in fact, the word gambling never mentioned in the verse. Same time. And actually we can go and read the interpretation for the, 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 uh, for the verse. You see, I can go right now and see the interpretation and you will see that it's not what they are claiming. In the same time, many of you do not know that this verse came to Muhammad in chapter five, verse number 90. But in fact, this is one of the last chapters Muhammad he received. If we check, you will find it came almost when Muhammad was dying. If we go here, we will find that chapter 5, let us go to chapter 5. According to Revelation, it came as 112. So the Muslims, they live their life playing, if this is gambling, playing gambling, drinking, and doing all those things which is bad. And now Muhammad, he have two, three years to live. And now he decided to forbid gambling. But look what happened. A group of Muslims, one of them, his name is Abdullah, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. He invites some Muslim to his house and they start drinking until they get drunk. And then they stood up to pray. And then inst instead of reading the chapter of Al Kafirun correctly, they start skipping verses and skipping words. And then the verse came down saying, Oh, who you believe, don't drink when you are praying. But doesn't say it's forbidden. Nowhere in the Quran it says that drinking alcohol is forbidden. Actually, I can show you sheikhs 
saying th so. Let me look for it. Okay, I should have just found one. This is Morocco, word news. Nothing in Quran says alcohol is haram. And this is Al Arabiya TV, Saudi Arabia. This is what? Saudi Arabia TV. And this is in Saudi Arabia, in the heart of the Islamic countries. Nowhere in the Quran it says. And this is a newspaper publishing this from Morocco. Saudi writer Abdullah al bukhid he has a claim on Monday that there's not a single verse in the Holy Quran forbid alcohol, adding that the Quran does not even mention the punishment of our drinking alcohol. And he said, I find, you can read with me, I did not find anything in the Holy Quran that forbid alcohol, and there is no punishment too. Abdullah al bakhid he wrote that in Twitter. This is the tweet. Now, the verse in front of us, I will open my Skype, and I challenge any Muslim to show me one verse in the Quran, make a punishment for those who drink or do gambling, or play chess, or listen to music. Or actually, I challenge you to find me even a punishment for rape. Even rape. So when the Muslim, they speak about things, you know, they are the one who kisses stones, and they are the one who accuse you of adultery. They are the one who do muta and five, six minute marriage, as maybe hijab he said, and they are the one who accuse you of adultery. They are the one who take interest from the bank, but they give it different names, and they claim that they don't take interest. They are the one who practice pedophile act, and they speak about ethic in the West. Let me open Skype in case there's any Muslim would like to join us. He's more than welcome. If we go to the, to the Bible, we will find that the Quran, actually, this verse is starting from Paul. But Paul make it so clear that no one will enter heaven. No one is going to enter heaven. Let me find the verse. Give me a second. All right. I find it really funny when a Muslim he try you know, to speak about uh, God and holiness and all kind of uh, all kind of issues. And you know, remember the Quran said that we will go with what Allah He forbid for the Jews too, because you will notice that the Quran says clearly that Allah did not forbid those things to the Jews and to the Christians, which is very weird. Uh, I'm opening my Skype. It's open, I think, yeah. Uh, 
for Corinthian, yeah, first Corinthian. This is the Bible here. And you will see that it's almost as somebody copy paste from the word of Paul and he is putting it in the Quran. I remember Muhammad here is almost dying. This is the end of his life. Shouldn't those things come in the beginning? I mean, you are almost dead. And the Muslims all this time, they are drinking. And you, your God never forgot. Never, I mean, they are drinking in front of him to the point they are drunk. They go to the mosque and they are totally drunk. They fell apart. People, they are laughing at them. So if you, if you read with me here, you will see it's speaking about the righteousness and speaking about those who they are going to go to heaven. You know, no thief, thief will not go to heaven. Muhammad is a thief. The people who drink and get drunk, they make it like a lifestyle, they don't go to heaven. And the list in front of you, all of those things, you do them, including homosexuality too. There's not a single verse in the Quran speaking about somebody who is homosexual will go to heaven or to hell. The Quran actually says, whoever says shahada, he go to heaven. Not a single verse. In fact, the Quran teach that if somebody is a homosexual, you beat him with sandals. That's it. This is the penalty. So imagine adultery. The, the penalty can be very severe. But homosexuality will beat him with sandals. And if you don't believe me, I can show you the verse from the Quran. <clears throat> and here we notice that Islam is not really a religion it's just a Muhammad trying to copy other people trying to make a religion and this religion is full of holes not only the narrative have holes the Quran is full of holes because it doesn't make sense that there's a God he make verses or he make a book and then he forgot to tell us what, what is homosexuality in Islam is. Why? There's no homosexual. If you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will see that the whole town is homosexual. The family of Muhammad, if not Muhammad himself. Here it says, if two men among you are guilty of such an act, punish them both of them. Okay, what is the punishment? In the Quran, there is no punishment. Nowhere it says what the punishment is. In fact, the word in Arabic, it doesn't say punish them. It says, فَآذُوهُمَا أَذُوهُمَا Heard them. Turn in front of you. Heard them. Not punish them. This is why if we go and read the interpretation, we will find it says, beat them with sandals. Beat them with sandals. So, Quran is not a book of God. Quran does not even forbid what it should be forbidden. No verse in the Quran is forbidden alcohol. Actually, alcohol, according to the Quran, in different verse, it's a miracle of Allah. If we go here, we will find the Quran saying the following. Allah himself is praising being a drunk claiming that this is a miracle, a sign from Allah. Chapter 16, verse number 67. You ask the Muslim, they say to you, this is before this uh, uh, alcohol became forbidden. Where is the alcohol became forbidden? Nowhere. The other verse says, Ishtanibu, avoid it. And if the Quran saying in one verse, according to them, alcohol is forbidden, how Allah here, he is praising alcohol. Change the translator because some most of the translation are very confusing and they lie a lot when they translate.
Look what it says here. This is was before the order of the formation of alcohol drink. What is the order of formation alcohol drink? They will say to you in the Hadith. The Quran is not a book of God. The Hadith is the book of God. Because how Muhammad received his order? Didn't he receive his order? Especially about law and order in the Quran. Is the Quran is the book of law and order? Or the Quran is about the flying carpet of cinnamon? So when this fool did that, he says that four uh, evil eliminated in the Quran, I challenged the Muslim to show me how those four evil eliminated in the Quran. Neither gambling is forbidden. Neither drinking is forbidden. And as you see, the God of Islam, he is claiming that this is a sign from Allah. It is a sign from Allah. Remember when this fool, Nadir Ahmad, he called me and he says he claimed that Quran, according to scientists study, uh, those who drink alcohol, they will have a syndrome for their children. This is false. You know, those things can happen if you are addicted for anything. Addiction, this is a different story. Do we have any Muslim? And if you read this story here, the verse which the dad is reading, you will see that this is because a bunch of Muslims, they were drunk, and this is at the end of the life of Muhammad, which means Muslims all this time are drinking and praying. What a party time. Read it carefully. I went to a group of migrants and helpers, and they said to me, let us feed you and give you wine to drink. This was before it was made unlawful, okay? So I went to the field where they were, had roasted a camel, a head, and a barrel of wine, a barrel of wine, not, guys, not a bottle of wine. Do you see the word barrel? The Muslims don't drink in a barrel of wine, they drink in a barrel of wine. The whole barrel of wine. And this is at the end of the life of the time of Muhammad. He's almost dead. So all this time Muhammad did not notice that this is bad. So look what happened. They start drinking and eating as usual. And then when time for a prayer, they stood up and they start falling apart. Here it says, I ate and drank with them. Then I mentioned the immigrant, the helpers, he said, the immigrants are better than the helpers. One of the men grabbed one uh, of uh, uh, Joe Bones and uh, of the, uh, of the uh, head we ate. And he hit me with it. The Muslim now, the good believer, the companion of Muhammad. Those are the companion of Muhammad. The companion of Muhammad, they are drunk, fighting and hitting each other. So now they ate the head of the camel. One of the good companion of Muhammad, he grabbed a bone of the camel and he hit his brother in Allah. He hit me with it severe in my nose. In the process, I went to the Messenger of Allah and give him peace and informed him in what happened. And Allah exalted is he revealed about me and the matter of drinking. So, so if those guys did not fight, Allah will not send the verse. I mean, do you see the stupidity? So if those guys did not fight and hit each other, and nobody went to Muhammad, no verse, no, no Quran. They are drinking a barrel of wine. You see, when, uh, when we speak about Jesus drinking uh, uh, some uh, uh, juice, some they say it's wine, some they say it's not, doesn't matter really. But we don't see a bunch of drunk people. <laughs> we see a very wise conversation 
extremely wise, extremely beautiful, and we don't see people beating each other. So the Muslims, they accuse us of drinking, and they are the one who drink by barrels, and they beat each other, and those are the companion of Muhammad. Do you see it? In the same time, we find that the Quran claiming that drinking alcohol is a miracle from Allah. And this verse here, nowhere it says that it's forbidden. Nowhere. It says, Ijtanibu, which means avoid it. This is another Muslim scholar. And this is in Egypt. Egyptian cleric says, alcohol is not haram in Islam. And he is challenging them to show them one verse, it says it's haram. Nowhere. And the video in front of me, I can't can play it. Egyptian cleric, Sheikh Rashid Mustafa, made a controversial statement claiming that drinking alcohol is not haram, which means not forbidden under Islam. And those who say it, it is haram, it's a lie. And actually he's right. He said to you, well, show me where it says it's haram. Where it says in the verse it is haram. And he said here, well, if the alcohol even is forbidden, then God should give a punishment. So he's agreeing that his God is, you know, this book is missing, this religion is missing, missing a big, major thing. How you forbid it? But there is all those things. Did you forbid it? Where is the punishment? And those are shakes. Those are not potatoes in YouTube. Like, the ketchup boy who claimed to be a sheikh, but yet he cannot read two words in Arabic. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim who would like to join us? Okay. <laughs> Let us see. We have extremely extreme heat and the town there is no two, no water for two days. I hope we will not lose electricity because that will be really problem. No water, no electricity. That's mean this town run by inshallah. <clears throat> Any Muslim? Uh, okay. All right, we have somebody, we have a Muslim friend, he's going to call me soon. Until then, we will see. Uh, uh, some of you send me a text message in Patreon, and they said you have a question for me. It's your time to ask, man. The one who said you have, like, uh, maybe two of you or three of you send me emails. Remember always, you see, if you send me a question in Patreon, the first... Uh, because my typing is not so fast and my English is not so good. So answering you by email is really horrible, take a lot of time, and it's a waste of time for me because instead of answering the same question for a thousand or ten thousand people, 
I'm going to give you answer only for you. So don't ask me in Patreon. Here. Feel free. Can you give us the link about the barrel of wine? Sure. You want to get the barrel too? Okay, this is the barrel of wine. And this is the book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul. <clears throat> All right. As you see, this is the official Islamic website of the Kingdom of Jordan. This is not a Christian website, and this is not Christian books, and those are not our translation. I have a question about how to confront Shia Muslim about the age of Aisha, and if you cannot, what is the best way to confront Shia? First of all, my friend Shia, there are people who practice taqiyya non-stop. Even when a Muslim Shia, he speak to his wife, he have to lie to her. Lying in Shia religion is a must. Otherwise, you are not a Shia. Actually, there's a statement that says, if you don't do taqiyya, you are not a Shia. It's a must. So when you say uh, uh, con confront a Shia about the age of Aisha, will the Shia they believe that they can have sexual relationship with an infant? If we go to the book of Tahrir al-Wasila, and let your friend, you can call me right now, <laughs> we go under the topic of enjoying sexual relationship with infant. Aradiyah. So how and why you need to convince him about Aisha if those people, they are willing to have sexual relationship with an infant? This is the book of Tahrir al-Wasila. It's in the front of your eyes. Volume number two, page number 241. You know, the, the question is, or the problem, or the issue number 12. It says, it is not permissible uh, to have to jump on the on the wife. You know, even even their their text is really rude and filthy. What what you know what to mean? What it mean to step on or to jump on? So they speak about the wife as if she is a goat, as 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 you are a male goat or you are a donkey, and she is a, a female donkey, and you jump on her. So it says it is not permissible to to jump on the wife before the age of nine. Regardless if the effin was continue or disturb, which means you marry her, divorce her, marry her, divorce her. But all other enjoyment or enjoyment, like touch with desire and hugs and tafkhid, which means putting your, your private part between her legs, it is okay. Even if she is an infant. And let me use Google translation. Because they might say to you, it doesn't say that, CP. You go to number 12 here. It is not permissible to have intercourse with the wife before she completes nine years old, whether the marriage is a permanent or not. As for other pleasures, such as touching with desire, embracing and the grabbing, and this is false translation, by the way, it says about putting your private part between her legs. There's nothing wrong with it. Even if she's a female, she is an infant. Let me shorten the link for you, so you can give it to your friend, the Shia, who is playing. You know, this is what they do. I mean, they 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 have the the religion of prostitution, and then they play that they are the, the they are the Virgin Mary. <laughs> and you can use Google Translation even if you don't speak Arabic. And as you see here, they confirm the age of 12. Why? Because, sorry, of 12, 9, because Muhammad, he did have intercourse at the age of 9. Let me see. I will shorten the link for you.
There's many websites they claim they shorten links, but they are fraud. Okay. This is the link in front of you. Feel free to read it. Any other question? Imagine how low. I mean, they are talking about the dad was speaking about what? Eliminating for evil in the world. I mean, how evil can be more than this? An infant. How evil, evil can be that there is a human being, even donkeys don't do that. And they say that Islam is eliminating evil. Is it true Sunni saying Shia are not Muslims? They do drink. Okay, that will take us to our, our to, uh, to the rest of our uh, topic. Because you remember, you see the title, it says Islam is a form of gambling. You know, when a Muslim, he says, like before I go live, one of the Muslims, he said that Islam uh, like promise you uh, eternal life. I laugh because this is absolutely false and this is against Islam teaching. Why? Because we know that Muhammad himself, he said that Islam will be 73 sect. 73 sect. And one of them only will go to heaven. So Islam is a perfect gambling, actually gambling, when you play gambling, uh, they divide the papers to four, right? Is that correct? And how many papers in the card? I think it's 52. I used to play a card like when I was a teenage. Uh, so imagine, if you are playing a card, Is it 52 or I'm wrong? Because I'm going to use my calculator. Is it, is it correct, 52? Uh, we divide it to four. That means your chance of winning is 13 to 52. Is that correct? I just chose my calculator. It is 13 to 52. Which means you have 13 card in the game out of 52. So if we do this, if we say 52 minus 13, which is your card, that's mean your opportunity to win is 13 out of 39. Now, if we do this, if we divide 39 to 13, that means your chance to win is a 3. If I'm giving the number correct. Anyway, it's like 25%. I mean, there's four people, right? It's 24, 25%. So look what will happen now. We have a religion. The founder of it saying, if you join me, Only one sect will go to heaven, and there is 72 will go to hell. I remember one a Muslim sheikh, he was saying, Hey, how come you Christians are very divided? Okay, which one I'm going to go to heaven? Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox uh, Christian friends? Ah, I got you busted. Don't change topic. <laughs> I said, Abdul, are you sure you want to switch topic? Because we're talking about different story, you know? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I said, are you sure? You know, the Muslim, they were saying to him in the chat, Brother, He's saying to you, are you sure? So don't say that. Don't say I'm sure. Don't say I'm sure. The Abdul, he wasn't looking at the chat maybe to take the advice. So he said, I'm sure. So said, okay, read this hadith for me. So he started reading. Okay. The prophet S.A.W. say that the Jews will split into 71 or 72 sect. The Christian will split into, uh, uh, into 71 or 72 sect. 
and the community, my community, the Muslims, will be 73 say. <laughs> so I said, the question I, you gave me, I will give it back to you. <laughs> Look how stupid this religion. You know, if you ask any Muslim, they will say, there's millions of Christian sect. What are you talking about? But if this is true, that's when Muhammad true is a, tr a truly, truly a false prophet. Because you're a prophet. And look, Muhammad is not sure, huh? You know, listen, 71, 72, but he's sure. It's one of, two, like 71 or 72. Because the Muslim will be 73 guaranteed. And now if we count how many Muslim sect, it's endless. Gambling. So when a Muslim, he lied to you and he says, Islam promised you salvation, how you can receive salvation if you do not know which sect? He will say to you, a jama'ah, jama'ah, jama'ah mean group, or jama'ah. What a, what a, what's a stupid answer? They asked Muhammad, who are those sect? He said, a jama'ah. <laughs> the group, which one? Well, all of them are a group, this is what they call them, sect. Do you see it? This hadith here says, let me zoom in so maybe you can see it better in the text. The children of Israel will be into 71 sect. My nation will split into 72. But look, 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 Muhammad, look the fool. In the previous hadith, he said his nation will be 73. This idiot, he don't remember what he said yesterday. Yesterday he said 73, today is 72. Do you see it? Is this hadith a sahih? It is sahih. So how this hadith can be sahih saying 72, and how the previous hadith saying 73 can be sahih too? How both can be sahih? We are talking about numbers, remember? I wasn't talking about meaning. The numbers, it's, it's very simple. Even this one, you want to make games with it? Is it 72 the Muslim will be or 73? And all of them, they are sahih. Sahih, brother. The religion of Sahih, brother. Hmm? What we will do now? Which one of them? Which one? Sahih. Sahih. So Islam, for true, is a form of gambling. It is a gambling because when you join this cult, it's not only a sexual cult, it is a gambling. And you, you know you are a loser because there's no way there's God. He promised you if you go and hate the other neighbors, that he will give you a lot of women for sex. You, are, you must be stupid. You must be certified idiot. I mean, what kind of God he promised me I mean, this is what God he do? You open your door, you find a box full of women? Surprise, and they are naked. This is God. This is not the devil, this is God. And then what do you do after that? Allah, he promised you that your penis will never go limp. Never go limp? Yeah, you want you want uh, you want the penis go limp, and now it's time to use it. You want to be in the limbo. And then they start talking about morality. Morality. Look who is talking. Eliminating evil. Look who is talking. Let us see this hadith. We cannot find it in English. 
Um, let's try something else. Yeah, let us show this one. This one will do. This is God, my friend. This is God talking. The God inspired Muhammad. So the God of Islam is going to import women from hell. They are from hell. And why they are imported from hell? Because simply they are so, so good in boom, boom. They have a skills, brother. They have a long resume. Do you see what it says? Muhammad is swearing saying, there's no one whom Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah will marry him to 72 wives. This is the lowest reward, by the way. From the Huris and 70 and 72 from his inheritance. Two from the Huris and 72 from, 70 from the inheritance. From the people of hell. So every Muslim, he have a group of people he will inherit it's as if you are a property, you know? So he will inherit women from hell, all of them, all of them, they have desirable front passages. <laughs> what is the... Uh, chapter 5, verse number 51 applies only for wage war against Muslims. They quote verse 69, encounter for our argument. Well, there's no Muslim can encounter that argument because that would be stupid of them. For a very simple reason, the verse there says, take not Christian and Jews, doesn't say those who they are fighting you. And the Christian, they were not even fighting Muhammad. So take a Christian, take not Christians and Jews as a friends, for they are friends of each other. So it doesn't talk about those who they are fighting you. Secondly, when a Muslim, he says to you, uh, well, the response to that is a chapter 60, verse number 9. This verse. And I will show you what Muslim themselves they say about it. You will laugh. What this have to do first with the other verse? This one it says, uh, "Don't uh, Allah did not forbid you regard those who did not wage war against you to be uh, 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 good to them." If you read the story, you will find this is a story about the mother of Aisha. She came and she brought a gift for her. The mother of Aisha she refused to become a Muslim. So Muhammad, in order to accept the money, he said to her, "It's okay, you know they, they are not fighting us. It's okay, you know, you know she didn't accept Islam, so okay, you know." She is not even a, a she is not even a Christian. <laughs> she is not even a Jew. She is a pagan. So they they fabricate and they lie, and this is not really what it's meant. This is why Muhammad he says in chapter 9, verse number 99, 29, sorry, fight those who don't believe in Allah, not the one who fight you. Muhammad he sent the letter to the king of the Roman, saying to them in Jerusalem, the ruler, convert or die. Aslam Taslam. So how that have to do with this? They are hypocrite liars. And then you should ask him, do the Christian and the Belize, they have to pay jizya? You say yes. You say to them, everyone? You say yes, everyone. Okay, well that's mean. Islam in war with everybody. Islam, my friend, is in war with anyone. Anyone who don't accept Islam is in war. So when you go to chapter five or chapter nine, why we cannot take them as a friends? Simply because they are not believing in Prophet Muhammad. They are enemies. Actually, I will show you a better verse. A clear verse in the Quran saying, you will not find a single Muslim You will not find a single Muslim 
being or in love with those who oppose Allah Prophet, not in war with him. Those are your family. Let us see. Mm, let's see who is texting. Okay, we are still waiting for this guy who is supposed to be a Muslim. Uh, to text us and join us. Chapter 58, chapter 58 says, verse number 22, this is the last verse. You will not find one of those who believe in Allah and the last day, making friendship with those who oppose Allah and his messenger. They are opposing him, that's it. They are not in war, they are opposing. Even if they are their father, their sons, their brothers, their kindred, for such he has written faith in their heart. See, even your family, you cannot be friends with them. So where is the war? Your son, your brother, your mother, your father, your sister, so my friend, always there is something easy to prove. Isn't it the Bible says, from their fruit you shall know them? So if the Muslim says, well, we can take you as a friend, so why you invade us? And where in the verse it says, take a friend, don't take a friend, those who they are fighting you. Can we read the interpretation for the verse? Open the interpretation for them, you will see it says clearly. You cannot take Christians and Jews as friends. I will go. This is Ibn Kathir. Anyone is not embracing Islam, he is in war with Allah. And if you are a fool, they can fool you. But you know, I always say, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, well, how foolish are you? I mean, this is the most dumb idiot ever in history. The most obvious stupid prophet. Read carefully. Allah forbid his believing servant from having Jews and the Christians as a friend. Suddenly, suddenly you see, if somebody is saying to you they are in war with us, how they can be your friends anyway? I mean, do you see even this, how, how stupid the answer is? If the Quran is saying that don't, don't take them as friends, that's mean take them as enemies. So who is the one forcing enmity? In chapter 5, verse 14, the Quran says, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christian until the day of judgment. <laughs> so the verse itself, refuting them, why you don't use your brain? I want to take you as a friend. The verse saying, take not Christian and Jews as friends, but if we are enemy, we will not take you as a friend. Do you, do you know what I mean? How we are in war, and I want to take you as a friend. So this is not about people in war, this is about people who they are in peace. A Christian, a Jew, he want to be a friend to you. You are forbidden. However, in chapter 3, verse number 28, it says, you can take them as a friend as long you don't mean to do so, which means you are lying, speaking to them in a friendly way, but your heart dislikes that. Who said that? This is their books. Who said that? This is their scholars. Who said that? This is the cousin of Muhammad. It says here, uh, the one who take the disbelievers, the Jews, as the, for their friend, so as for the become might might and honor, like if you make an honor, read friendship, in the preference to believers, 
The one who do take them as a friend, and he is sincere in that friendship, the one who do that, seeking might and honor by taking the non-believers, they call us hypocrites, imagine, <laughs> and the disbelievers as a friends, he has no connection with Allah, he has no honor, mercy, or protection from Allah. But what happened? He just took a friend, he's a Christian. Yes, the second you take a Christian as a friend, he is, you are not a Muslim. So what we see today, you know, Muslims, they joined the Congress in USA, they died, you see the congresswoman with her name from Somalia, she dies, she danced with a homosexual. All of this is to betray the system, taqiyya. This is the, this is the verse about taqiyya. It says here, it in tattaqu minhum tuqat. So you do taqiyya, taqiyya mean, read carefully, guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, taking as it were security, taqiyya. Saving yourself from, be, by, from, from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while your heart is like this. Do you see it? Uh, my friend, we don't care if Muhammad was illiterate or he was not illiterate. Muhammad was an idiot in either way. Who care? All right, we have an ex-Muslim. You want to ask questions, so we will take it. Hello. Hello, CP. How are you? Hey, Muhammad. How are you, my friend? Good. I'm good. Uh, I actually have a question for you. If you All right. Don't mind. Uh, okay. So here's something. Whenever I uh, try to talk to one of my relatives, uh, namely my brother, about some of the points you bring, right? Like, so uh, it's Maida, I number 90, right? Okay. So I can mention that, okay, go to Asbab al Nuzul, this book, and read yeah. this, right? And then, they gonna tell me one of multiple things. So one of them is in the same uh, uh, Asbab al yeah. it, it mentions other reasons. Okay. Right? So, so there's like four different reasons and the funny thing is that they are contradictory. So we don't know which is read and which is not. So they might always say, okay, why did you pick up that one? Don't right. take it. You know, we can go to different interpretation. As an example, we can go to Al-Baghawi, you know, where Ibn Kathir, he quoted. We can go to Ibn Kathir, we can go to Al-Qurtabi, we can go to, uh, take a jail, a jail. You know, we are just taking their books randomly. All of them are stupid. All their books is a stupid books, you know. If you go, you see like in, uh, in Arabic, uh, it's different from what you see in English. And you speak Arabic, right? Yes. Okay. So if I go right now, me and you in uh, in Arabic, this is not Asbab al Nuzul. I'm not showing Asbab al Nuzul. No. This is Al Qurtubi here. Okay. If they don't like Al Qurtubi, we can go to a different book. What Al Qurtubi is saying, the following, and I'm going to show on the screen uh, so you can see. Yeah, it might take a second for you to go ahead. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, it says here, uh, when a group of Muslims, they were, they were, uh, uh, they were praying, like praying, they got a drunk and, you know, they messed up reading the verses and they were falling apart. So it's here, here, let's see what's, uh, where, where it uh, start. Let's go from the top, actually, in this uh, page, show you all. This is a Saudi. Asadi here it says, uh, actually Asadi doesn't say anything, right? just stupid translation. Let us see other one. Al Wasiyat al Tantawi. Speaking about why Khamar, uh, what is bad with it, etc. See here. Yeah, 
says here that Amr, uh, when he was reading the Amr al-Khattab, uh, he said, Allahumma bayyan lana fil khamri bayanan shafiya. As you see, this is another problem here in, in Islam because Amr al-Khattab is the reason for verses to come. You remember the hijab? Omar the one who make it. The Kaaba, praying to the Kaaba. Omar the one who make it. The divorce about Muhammad wives, you know, Sagat Aymanahuma. Omar behind to make it. And this one here says that Omar al Khattab, he asked Allah, saying, Allahumma bayyan lana al khamra, al khamra bayyana shafiya. So Allah saying the verse, not Muhammad. It's not Muhammad who asked for it. And then he says, uh, And this is the opinion of the of the of the Kashaf. And some of the scholars they agree with him. And then he continues saying. Uh, it says here that a group of Muslims, uh, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, uh, he invited some Muslims and they start drinking and get a drunk. And then some of them they stood up to pray. And then when they start reading the prayer of Al Kafirun. Uh, they, you know, like they messed up the chapter and they were reading it not right and they were drunk. Uh, and then when they, they get drunk too, they were saying like, uh, you know, like what the Arab they do when they proud about themselves, they make poetry and they start accusing each other and they're fighting each other. And then here it says, one of them, he took the, the bones of the, of the camel as the other the one we show you. It says, and he hit, hit him with it. And then he went to the Prophet of Allah, and he gave him the verse which Allah he sent to him. And, and this is when Umar, he says, Allahumma bayyan lana fil khamr, bayyanan shafiya. So after the guy, he hit the other guy, because all of them are drink, drunk, Umar, he made a prayer saying, may Allah send us a verse about uh, wine. And then the verse came. So if not the fight happened, if not Umar, he asked for it, no verse will come. And this is not a Sbab al-Nuzul, this is a you know, Muslim interpretation, sheikhs, uh, they're scholars. Uh, this is al portavi no, same story, you know. Uh, so there's actually, actually, uh, and I, 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 I like, like talking to you, but I also understand there's uh, the, the other caller might call any moment. It's so, okay, you know, nobody's calling for now, but I mean, do you see this is not our problem? Uh, and yeah, where is where just, where the verse where the verse my friend where the verse saying it's even forbidden but not a silly something and this is the point like i'm i i, I don't it's not a hell i'm wanting to die on i'm just mentioning it but and uh, if you think about it uh, there's so many different stories like i'm looking at the screen and you keep going and going and that's only one text here and one book and every one uh, mentioned the story a little bit different, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> this, like, like you know the term uh, Chinese whispers? With, it's basically when people in a circle, uh, you start to whisper to your friend, you tell him like a sentence that goes all around. And uh, at the end, you listen to it, it's totally different story. You see, this, the same the same verse, there's a million, like now here, I'm reading a different story here. It says that this is about Mu'az ibn Jabal. Uh, he was reciting the Quran, and this is the one Muhammad, he, uh, you know, he, uh, he said when he died, this, the throne of Allah was shaking, <laughs> you know? So uh, this guy was a drunk too, and they missed the chapter of Al-Kafirun, Al they missed it up. So you see, it doesn't matter what the reason, this is at the end of Islam. Muhammad here is dying. This is the end of the life of Muhammad. Chapter 5 but, is chapter number 112. But CP, the thing is, and here is like whenever I press someone, I always get this thing. Well, it's a uh, weak hadith. You show it, it's hadith, sahih. You tell it, it's weak. But regardless, they always go back and tell you, we accept the following, we accept the Quran, we accept the... No problem, if you accept the Quran, there's not a single verse in the Quran saying it's forbidden to drink alcohol. Show me. 
This verse it says, you speak Arabic, they speak Arabic, it says, yeah. it says, Ishtanibu. Actually, I argued exactly for that because, <laughs> like, when they don't want, like, someone could argue that when you say it's too bad, uh, it's something from the devil, don't even come clear to it. That means hey, it's so bad. No, it's no, my friend. Oh, okay, oh, there's many things from the devil. Is, isn't it lying from the devil? But most of there's no punishment for lying. Islam actually encourages you to lie. Uh, 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 what? You see, there's there's many there's many other things. There's many other things. Everything is bad. Yeah, but what is, sorry, what is the punishment? Want, what, is the, what, what is the punishment in the Quran? What is the punishment in the Quran? Yeah, but but CP, they take, uh, and I'm sure I was talking over you. Uh, uh, they say we take the Quran and we take the Hadith in the six books. No right? problem. Okay, let's take the Quran. So how Allah, just, just me, how Allah the same God, me. hold on, just, just wait for me. How yeah. Allah the same God is praising the, the alcohol in different verse in the chapter of An-Nahl. Yeah, for, for me, I understand this total... Uh, nonsense but for them they can spin it in some ways i still believe it's nonsense uh but i'm saying uh, if you go to the to the hadith they accept they probably find that there's a hadith that says anyone who touches anyone who says the uh, the like uh, alcohol Anyone who uh, touches the alcohol, anyone who serves the alcohol, anyone who prepares the alcohol, they are cursed or something like that. Okay, well, was seems... Muhammad cursed? Because Muhammad, he prepared alcohol, he drank alcohol, and all of them did drink alcohol. As we see, Muaz ibn Jabal, I think he was mentally ill, but like I'm saying in their belief, yeah. right? Like what I'm trying to do is. A lot of Muslims rely on someone to come and set them up, like the smart uh, the person uh, is so unimportant, Sheikh Osman. Yeah, uh, and he's a donkey, right? And he doesn't know shit, he's back, anything, sorry. Um, but they always come back and say, ha, huh, look, there's a hadith here that says, no problem, you see, even if there's hadith, even if there's a hadith, you see, you can save yourself by the hadith, but then this Islam is not religion, but the Quran itself. But I'm saying, um, um, my question is... For the I, I, I'm, I'm advising you, I will listen to me. When a Muslim, yeah. he go, in the, uh, he take, he try to take you to a corner, in fact, he is cornered himself. So when he says to you, there's a hadith, then you should say to him, so there is no verse in the Quran saying there's a punishment for this because it is a sin. So, as long as the punishment is not in the Quran, what is my guarantee that this hadith is even true hadith? It's a hadith. It's if, if Allah, if Allah, words. he sent orders, the order should be in the Quran. Should not be in the hadith. I, I agree with you, but for them, you know, I think you know that for them, it's Quran and hadith. No, my, no, my friend, I'm not saying no, I'm not saying no. I know that Islam actually doesn't exist without the hadith. Yeah. But I'm saying Islam is a stupid religion because if you claim that the Quran is a book and perfect from God, well, the perfect God book doesn't work by itself. <laughs> In the same time, right. if we take the hadith, if we take the hadith, the hadith says, and this is a hadith, this is sahih. Muhammad says, anyone who write down anything except what I say, uh, except the Quran, you should erase it. And this is hadith too. And this is sahih, this is sahih Muslim. So Muhammad he says, لا تكتبوا عني ومن كتب عني غير القرآن فليمحو So don't write anything from me except the Quran. If you write anything beside the Quran, erase it. Okay. So now, if we follow what Muhammad said, this they said to you, we follow the hadith, right? Well, this is the hadith saying we should erase the hadith. <laughs> So, so, so here actually, this is a proof to us that Islam is not religion, because if the book, you know, uh, uh, I am a Christian, do I need to go and read uh, uh, a book written by somebody, you know, about Jesus to understand what Jesus ordered me to do? No, I would go and see what okay. Jesus said, you know? But CP, but the truth, the unfortunate truth is, 
what usually they believe is that they are weak at religion. And if they read more, they would come with answers. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to corner them. So if they tell me, well, we accept the six books of Hadith, I can show them stuff from there. And if they tell me, well, it's weak, I will force them to give me a clear method how they, they accept that. This is Sahih Muslim in front of us now. Oh, this is can be weak. Sahih Muslim is weak. But, but don't they say in Sahih Bukhari there are weak hadith? There's no weak hadith. This is, this is a lie. You see, uh, uh, even like Sahih Bukhari, because there's some, there are a lot of embarrassment. They're trying to get rid of it. So they say it's weak, but it's called Sahih Bukhari for a reason. You see, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari is not even named Sahih Bukhari by Al Bukhari. Al Bukhari himself, he does not write a book. This is the Muslim Sunni project. They collected everything Al Bukhari he said and they called the book Sahih Al Bukhari. There's no book, it's called Sahih Bukhari. It doesn't exist. There's no book, it's called Sahih Muslim. It's not even exist. You don't have a copy. I changed the Muslim to show me original copy of Al Bukhari. Even they themselves, they say, well, this is according to, according to, according to the student of Al-Bukhari. He reported hadith, etc., etc. Et so they made a collection, they call it Sahih Al-Bukhari. And it's called Sahih Al-Bukhari because they study it very well. And every hadith inside it is Sahih. So this is a book. This is why it's called the highest books. Why? Because it's called in purpose Sahih. It was not a name. It was given the title of authentic because this is a collection of authentic only. Do you know what I'm saying? I understand, but uh, what happens? Uh, I know, I know what will happen, my friend. If somebody, if somebody, he, he will argue, he will argue. If somebody wanted to listen, it's up yeah, to but, him. But it's okay, no they, problem. They, you know, I, you, they, you, they, you remember the two Arab? There's, there is two Arab, they were hunting. One of them, the first one, he says to him, do you see that goat? I'm going to shoot the goat. He said, the other one, he says to him, well, this is not a goat. This is an eagle. The other one, the first one, he says, no, this is a goat. The other one, he says, okay, let us shoot. And if it's a fly, then it's an eagle. It's a bird. If it doesn't fly, it's a goat. The guy, he took the gun and he shot. And it did fly. So the second guy said, see, it is not a goat. It's a bird. The first guy, he said to him, you know what? It's a goat, even if it does a fly. And you must have, you must have <laughs> grown up at the same time. And uh, yeah, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. When somebody, when somebody you know, you are talking you to, a, you are talking to somebody. Problem. He believed that the goat know, does a fly. Honestly, honestly, there are people who are honest. If they uh, are, if they are honest, they will not play the game of the goat and the bird, you know? They are. They are not so, but for them, again, it, they have criteria. So they tell you, well, we believe in this, right? And we believe Quran and these books of Hadith. Okay, no problem. But so just as long... give me one minute, one okay. minute, I promise. Okay. But then you go to Babel Nuzul al Wahidi, we just we are using, and you show him, look. They were drinking by the barrel, and this happened. And they will tell you, okay, uh, well, show me this in uh, Sahih, uh, in these six books, right? Is there a way to find it in these six books? Uh, you know, I don't, then, I don't know really if this hadith will be exist in the uh, in those six books. I did not, I did not really search for it, but I can check it out. But it doesn't matter. You see, at the end of the day. Uh, why why even this book is exist and why they put it in their library and why they teach it in school if it's not valid and you know and why the interpretation all of them they agree with it and if you 100 years ago you asked for the best islamic books they would give you these books right exactly exactly today and actually even today even today you know those the one who reject today is those who you know let us say they became uh, more educated and they don't want to accept the reality that uh, Islam is really stupid, you know? That's that's all. Uh, and actually even the verse itself is a contradiction because if the alcohol is from the work of shaitan, right? So how yeah. alcohol will be in heaven? And how alcohol in chapter 16 
is a miracle of Allah. If they say the alcohol of this earth is from shaitan, will the same book praising the alcohol to be great as a sign from Allah in verse number 60, 67, chapter 16. So if the alcohol is from the act of shaitan, how in the world, chapter 16, this is Quran now, this is not hadith, how in the Quran says that this is a sign from Allah? So what is the goal when it says uh, uh, you have like alcohol without the goal? Without what? La gaula, la gaula. Yeah, it's, uh, simply it's like they will not even fight about it. They will not uh, go crazy. But it doesn't matter. It's alcohol. It says khamr. Anharu khamr, not only khamr, anhar. Rivers, rivers of, of wine. Wine is wine. doesn't matter. He, if you promise you won't get drunk, who care? Still, it's a wine. So if the wine is from the act of shaitan, then Allah is importing wine to his heaven. Why? Same time, if wine is in the earth, isn't from the act of shaitan, then chapter 16, verse number 67, claiming that making people get drunk is a goodly provision, and it is a sign for those who have wisdom, not for the fool. It's a sign, and it says here the word goodly, and goodly provision. So how the other verse says this is from shaitan, and this verse saying this is goodly provision, when I think the Muslims, they say this is the third step. Doesn't matter. Uh, you see, it's yeah. a third step. That means Allah is deceiving them. Because if Allah, he prays alcohol today, condemn alcohol tomorrow, that means Allah is a liar. Because alcohol is alcohol. Nothing changed. So what step? You know, you do not need to praise it to go in a step. You should actually do the opposite. You should slowly tell them it's not good. It's not right. But as you see, it says goodly. <laughs> I I once heard someone I don't want to say name, but he said that uh, the goodly stuff it's the stuff that is used in anesthesia where like they give it to you before the surgery. So like you hear people come up with all different stuff to justify things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to deal with these people. Well, bring them to me and let me deal with them. All right, my friend? Okay, my friend. All right, uh, take care. I'll see to them. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, our friend here, by the way, those who do not know, he left Islam uh, talking to us, right? Talking here in the program. Uh, that right? No, no. No, no. Uh, okay. Actually, it would I'm have sorry. made my journey uh, faster, to be can honest. Can you remind us? Can you, I... can you remind us about yourself a little bit before you go? I'm uh, like I'm originally from Syria. I don't live there anymore. Okay. Um, I was uh, like really devout when I was a kid because originally I was born in Saudi Arabia. I lived first ten years there. You know, you there's a big impression on you. Yeah. Um, I was totally in it. You know, like totally. Yeah, because all the, all the school is just Islam. You know, there's five uh, five five books they teach you. <laughs> You know, it's it's wicked. Yeah, it's even, really even the class for mathematics is about Islam. <laughs> Not a joke. It was it was like for I don't know if they said do these things, but there was a prayer, uh, a Bukhar prayer. You do it inside yeah, the know. school. There's no school in the, in the Saudi Arabia. Anyway, it's it's a, it's a it's a like it's a it's a brainwash uh, manufacturer. I don't know now. You know how it is now. But what I know about it, it is a joke. It's not really, it's not a school. Because you have five out of seven teaching uh, a class about Islam. So where is the school? What what you learn there? You know? Well, uh, the five thing is, uh, I think when you are at, uh, what do you call it? Senior year in high school. And then you have five subjects of, about Islam. Yeah. Right. But But I also remember that uh honestly it was very easy um you could easily be uh, uh like successful studying there um anyhow uh, long story short uh then uh when i became 10 my parents uh, came back home 
I was really religious. My uh, father is like a religious person. Um, so growing up, I always had like uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call it? Doubts, so to speak. And uh, contradicting stuff, you know, and I can't answer it. And uh, it was really hard because now I know a lot of people can say, yeah, it's, it's not with Muslim, it's not as it is, but okay. Uh, if you grew up where I grew up, that's what they used to teach us. Uh, and what I would argue that uh, that view is correct because any view is correct when you have something this big as religion. Anyhow, to keep it short, uh, I was really like uh, religious. I couldn't question my religion. That, that was the hardest thing because I used to believe that the devil was uh, communicating with me and uh, trying to make me leave Islam. And uh, think the most defining uh, like point in my journey, which lasted for years, because I was mostly because I was afraid to talk about. But uh, what happened is uh, when I reached the conclusion that I should seek a truth, wherever it is, I was no longer afraid uh, to uh, question and ask these questions. Very good. Well, good for you. Uh, um, Very so happy. Once uh, that happy, uh, happens, you can't stop, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, glad to have you, my friend. And feel free to bring your friends if they'd like to call us and join us. So let us see how they can resist. And they can convince us to be wrong. Thank okay. you very much for calling. Thank, Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank care. you. Have Take a good care. day. Bye bye. Yeah, actually, in Saudi Arabia, Ooh. this is why Saudi Arabia is the manufacturer of terrorism. If you go actually to the Islamic, uh, the government official website of Saudi Arabia, this is actually this is there. Uh, uh, this is for uh, uh, the first elementary. The first one here says Riyadhiya, which means mathematics. Here it says science. Then it says uh, Arabic, and then here it says English. And this is new, by the way, but, but in the old, uh, long time ago, English does not exist. There's no English for English, you know? And uh, yeah, and, and now there's a computer. But look, this is Tafsir. This is Tafsir. The subject, Tafsir. The second subject, Hadith. The sec a third subject, is Ijtima'iyat, which means uh, society. It's about Islam too. The A subject is Tawheed. The A subject to is Tahfiz, which means uh, reciting Quran. The sixth subject is Quran. <laughs> the fifth subject is family. It's about Islam too. The, the fourth subject is Fiqh, which means about the Islamic law, etc. Like what's right, what's wrong. The third subject is studying Islam. <laughs> the first subject is Quran. <laughs> So what is what uh, what? Uh, look at the translation. It's funny. Make Quran translated as reading. Quran is a Quran, not Quran. So Quran, uh, Islamic study, reciting study, Holy Quran study, memorization the Quran study, uh, monotheism study, social study of Islam. You know, I mean, <laughs> this is why those who study in Saudi Arabia, if you study in the government school. <laughs> Your son will be really something. He will learn nothing. He will spend the day learning how to pray, how to clean his nose, and how to spit in which direction, and how to wipe his nose if he have a booger. Uh, someone saying, um, uh, Okay, uh, uh, no. Let us see this person. Hello. Yes, my friend. Hey, CP, how are you? I'm fine. So you are a Muslim, you said? No, no, I'm not. Oh. I am a Lebanese-born Christian, but Arabic is my first language. Okay. So how yeah, can I, I do? yeah, I really appreciate what you're doing. If there's a proof for 
the action of the Holy Spirit on somebody's tongue, that would be yours, my friend. So kudos well, to I'm, you. I'm, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing just little. Uh, anything I can help? Anything I can help? Yeah, you with? I have it. Yeah. So in my research, I have something that I came across that I can't find an answer for, and I don't think I've heard you talk about. That is okay. what they call is al-huruf al-muqatta at the okay. beginnings of the surahs, which they don't have. If you they have my book, explain. if you have my book, you can ha you can have it. Oh, I don't. Yeah, all right. I'll get it. Okay. Fantastic. No, and we made we made videos before about it too. You did great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the main ones was the at the beginning of the surah of Mary Kahayas was like something that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we made we made you know those those Muhammad the fool he he was stealing them from obviously some some book, uh, and uh, he himself do not know what they meant. And the Muslims themselves do not know what it meant. So everybody, he start, you know, guessing what it does mean, you know. Mm. But if you look at it, uh, there is no other way to explain it except uh, that Muhammad was copying the Aramaic style of sending coded messages, you know. But mm -hmm. you are from Lebanon, he says, right? Yeah, yeah. There is something it's called speak as, uh, as fori. True. You know, like they speak the language of the birds. What is the language of the birds? You add letters between the letters, so when, when somebody he don't, is not used to the language, he will not understand the word, for what you are saying. So the Aramaic people, they used to uh, uh, um, use a code, because the Christian, they were dis discriminated by the Roman, and they kill you. If they find out that you are a, a Christian, you will be killed immediately. Or, you know, in the best scenario, they will feed you to the dogs or to the, uh, their cats. So what they do, they write letters, and those letters, they were coded, so if a Roman soldier, he stopped them, he checked what they, they have with them, eh, there's nothing, he can, he can understand the word, you know. Uh, so Muhammad, obviously, he took those from, I believe, from the book of Waraq ibn Nufal. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Waraq ibn Nufal, even the Hadith says, that Waraq he used to translate from the Gospel into Arabic, you know, yeah. a book. Speaking... Yeah, I was going to ask you, speaking of Waraqa bin Nawfal, what's your take on the book Qis wa Nabi, who was written by a Lebanese priest? It's a good priest? book because it's make a good uh, like uh, compare study. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it saves you time to find verses, but there's way more verses than what is written there. Uh, Muhammad, he stole from the, from the Bible. But the important that's, for us... that's th in your book? Uh, no, I mean, uh, for me, I speak about certain verses, like example... Uh, when the Quran speak about uh, that the uh, this is a this is a poetry from Amr al Qais, Muhammad. He took it and he changed it, and uh, you know he make it. Uh, it's coming from his God, but the but the but the poetry is there, um, and you know it's very well known, very famous. Yeah, that is different different style of book. It's it's a good book. Anyway, my friend, thank you. Thank you for calling. Thanks Anything else? That's about it. Thanks All right. So thank you very much. Thank you. We are, you know, we, as you know, we take calls from Muslims. And if you are an ex-Muslim, we can take as an exception. If not, please don't, you know, you can ask us in the, in the chat. Let's see here. We have a Muslim. He called himself uh, Ali. Let's see. Maybe is it online? Maybe this is an older text. Let's see. I think it's an older text. Yeah, this is older text. Do we have any Muhammadan? If you have a sheikh, if you are a sheikh, if you claim to have knowledge, and you, if you think you can refute us, please feel free. Call us. Anyone? You know, I find it very funny that this guy, he called himself Palestine and he's Pakistani. And he keeps saying when the verses were revealed, hey, uh, Abdul, when, you, when a Muslim, he's saying the verses were revealed, can you tell us how they are revealed? Just to show you how Islam is a mockery of anyone have little brain. When the verses are revealed, 
when you see the word revealed, you say, wow, the word of Allah was revealed? How? <laughs> How the Quran was revealed? Shall I show you? Palestine boy, you're a prophet. He used to receive a sound of a bell. Not jungle bells, different one. When the Quran was revealed, that's deep. You shocked us in the heart, brother. And the funny is, Muhammad, he said that shit, the, 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 the bell is the, uh, the instrument, the musical instrument of shaitan. It's in front of you. This is Sahih. This is all Sahih. The musical instrument of shaitan. Even angels will not enter a house, which there is a small bell. What about big bell? Do you see how big bell the, the, in the church? Big, not small bell. <laughs> the one you use for your cat, this one will scare the hell of a... Have you ever heard of an angels? They cannot enter a house because of a bell. Why? Are you there? So you know those Muslim kids, they come and they say, the verse was revealed and you think like you are swimming now in a clear water and the ocean is so beautiful. It's a verse, it was revealed, there's angels, there's God, there's a prophet. And then we find that it was revealed to him in the sound of a bell. In the top, in the top of that, angels will not even accompany any people who have a bell with them. That's why, you know, Billy Clinton never have angels with him. I mean, his name is Bill. Just imagine it. Think about it for a second. So, you're a prophet, he have a phobia, and his God have a phobia, and the angel, they have a weakness to the point a little bell can destroy them. And then we find that Muhammad himself, he received his inspiration in a sound of a bell reader. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih. Abu al-Harith, he said, Ibn Hashim, he asked the prophet, how does the divine inspiration come to you, Prophet of Allah? When you see the beginning, divine, look at the word, divine. Divine what? Inspiration. That's deep. I mean, we have to admit, all of us, it's a divine. And it is inspiration. What do you want more? Huh? What's wrong with you? You want more proof that the prophet is a prophet? It's a divine, it is inspiration. Okay, how he receive it? This is verse, Bismillah. Ah. Okay, this one is Alhamdulillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, okay, this one is says time to, for lunch. Verse revealed revelation. But you're you're a prophet, obviously mentally ill. Hear voices, hear sounds are not what does this have to do with God? And if you're a prophet, he received inspiration in the sound of a bell. How he translated to Quran? How the Quran became in Arabic? The German are listening. What a, what, a, what a stupid religion. This is a religion. This is, this is, you know, and they say to you, you make a mockery. This is, it's a mockery. This is a mockery. So, shaitan musical instrument is the bell. Angels will not accompany a person have a have a bell. And then angels sometimes come to me with the voice of a bell. Do we have any brave Muslim? I hope I'm not insulting you, Muslim, when I say brave. Hmm?
somebody offer Shabir Ali $1,000 per hour to debate me. My friend, give me that $1,000 for me and forget about Shabir Ali. <laughs> You offer him one thousand dollars, and he is sending me the WhatsApp, the the, the the you know the WhatsApp of Shabir Ali. What do I had offer Shabir one thousand per hour for a debate? He accepted. After he realized what I have say, he got this uh, this appear. Oh, so he accept, but then he noticed that it's a Christian prince. Okay. Uh, all right. They are sending me the text, the chat, and uh, with Shabir. I don't know if this is clear for you to read. I don't know. <laughs> One thousand dollar for me. Ah. <laughs> uh, you know, my friend, for $1,000, Muhammad himself will come to debate me. Are you kidding me? I mean, this guy was desperate for little pennies. He married a woman. She is way, way older than him just because of her pennies. Not because of her panties. Do we have any Muhammadan? I should, like, I should do a business like Muhammad. I marry a very rich woman. She can be very old, and she have no teeth to, for, for safety and security. You know, she will not bite me, and she will stay very early. And uh, you know, I take her flight jet, and I claim that I was meeting with Jibril, and uh, I invite like I, I will hire some beautiful uh, girls to work in the in the jet. You know, to serve. Uh, you know, the jet, not me. You know, take take a note, please. أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله أعوذ بالله. Oh boy. Any Abdul? Do you think Chabir will accept to cry? Accept? I find I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I cannot predict who accept who don't accept. People heart can change. People they can switch from worshiping the true God to worship the devil or vice versa. But this is not, well, you know, this is not my really my concern. Uh, you can you can, you can make your decision if you are stupid to convert to Islam. You can be. You know, I, I believe it's a stupid decision to convert to Islam. For a Muslim, they believe it's a smart decision, no problem. But anyone have little brain, he should ask himself a very little question. This God Allah, which Muslim never saw, never met, they never heard His voice. He promised us if we go to heaven. We will have a tree of banana. Tree of banana. But we will have a banana, actually. He did not say even the tree. Uh, <laughs> when I, you know, when my, myself, I say to myself, you know, like when I was a kid, uh, reading, as you see, you go to school, everything is Islam, 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 Islam. You know, they flood you, hoping that you will be a banana. You know, you will be a banana. You know, they want to make you a banana. And then, you know, you ask yourself, why does God is mentioning banana? What exactly the reason? The reason is very simple. Anything. Anything. Uh, people they wish to have in Saudi Arabia, which means something they don't really have. Or let us say they consider it as, an, as a must to have. It's mentioned in the Quran. As an example, the Arab, they sleep in the floor. Until now, actually, the Bedouin, they sleep in the floor. Muhammad, he promised them beds, raised bed, not just bed. Why? Because those are
something they don't have. Beds? We will have beds, we? Uh, a lot of water, a lot of greenery. Why? Because they are people of the desert. The God, he promised them shade in heaven. There's no heat. There's no cold because they suffer from both. They suffer from extreme cold at night. And I don't know if you've been in the desert before or in Saudi Arabia. And extreme heat in the daytime. And then we find this God. He promised even by fruits like the fig or olive. You ask yourself, why the God, he swear by a fruit. When I say swear, I mean swear, he swear. He take an oath. Why he want to do that? Isn't it the most silly? act of God to swear by fig to swear by olive and then he swear by the Mount of Sinai Muhammad he heard in the Mount of Sinai there is fig trees there is olive trees And then you will see that the verse after it have nothing to do with the verse before it. The Mount of Sinai and this city made secure. What does city have to do? This is why you see when there's, I don't know if you saw some videos, documentaries. In their documentary study, they say that the city of Mecca is not really where Muhammad was, exist. It was in Jordan. I don't know if you saw this documentary. I, I forgot the... Uh, I forgot the name of the geologist who did this study. So he did some study in geology, etc., whatever, and history. And he come with this conclusion. And this verse will make you think about it this way, because what the Mount of Sinai and what the city, what is the city of Muhammad have to do with each other? And what is the connection and how we jump from here to there? And then he speak about how he created the man. What does this have to do with the previous verse? What the fig and the olive have to do with God anyway? You swear by them. Swear. You know, always you swear by something higher than you. Like I swear by God. Or you swear by something so dear to you, like you swear by your son. We as a Christian, by the way, we should not swear at all. So you can swear, I swear by, like for me, I don't know, I have nothing dear to me. Let us see. God is dear to me. <laughs> I swear by Muhammad, this is the most dear person to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it it, uh, it it make like a, 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 a like a rabbi music. But then he could not continue. He you know he broke the word and he, un, he ended with taqwim. Taqwim is not the same as amin. Then he says, "Thumma radnahu asfalu saifilin." This is just stupid. It's, there's no meaning. You know, it's, it's it's useless. Useless. What the religion of Islam have to do with fig? Then who can give you the lie after this? about this judgment. What, this, what is the judgment? Garbage and garbage. Banana. The banana religion. Your penis will be a banana. Endless banana. The God who promised you banana. Have you ever heard of a God who promised you a bracelet? And he forget once one verse he says breast breast from gold and the other verse says breast from silver. And why we are going to wear bracelet in heaven? What you see, uh, uh, people who pray uh, uh, wear those bracelet usually they want to show their luxury. You know what I mean? 
We are rich. But we are in heaven. What we will show if everybody were embraced, what the point? And why do you want to be embraced anyway? So here it says that you will be wearing, will be given to them, they are in a bracelet of gold, and they shall wear green robes of fine silk. The fact, uh, it doesn't say just silk, it says silk made in Iran, stabrak. The stabrak is like Gucci at that time, like the most expensive silk. This is natural silk of the rich, rich, rich people. So does God imagine if he is making Quran now, he will promise you what is the most expensive? I'm not expert, but I heard about Gucci. I never had, I never had Gucci before, you know. I always, I try to catch Gucci, Gucci go. I don't know why. So what's Tabrak? And then you will be reclining in the, on, in the top of your couches. What, what the heck is that? This is heaven. What do you mean, why not? Why you want to buy those expensive clothes? Go to Walmart, get the jeans for $14, and that's it. Do you think anyone care really what they are wearing? And if there's somebody care really what are you wearing, that's mean he don't care for you. <laughs> what, what? I'm the last one who to spend money over, you know, expensive clothes. It's a silly, it's a silly act. Actually, they are fooling you. When you spend too much money, even if you are rich, the person who is making you spend that money, he is fooling you. Because it's not worth it. I mean, the, the bag cost $14,000. Why? $14,000 for a bag, for a purse? If I'm married and my wife, she buy one, I will send her free shipping and hand it into Allah with the bag. <laughs> So anyway, but you know, this is, this is mean. Islam is speaking to your greed. You know, you, is, is Muhammad trying to make you a greedy person who is dreaming about gold and silver and bracelet and silk? I mean, we are in heaven. What is that? Who care for silk in heaven? Is that what heaven is about? We are in silk? So if I buy silk here, now it's fine? Can you believe how stupid this region is? Uh, <clears throat> Let us see. Until now, we did not get any Muslim to text us. Do you see how brave they are? Yeah. The funny is that the Muslim, they say, one of you will send me email saying, the Muslim, they claim that when they speak to Christian prince, if they, if a person, he, you know, he, uh, uh, he got the Christian prince busted, he hang up on him. That's, uh, you know, listen, if this is true, even that will work for your benefit. You can record it and you can show people how I run away from you. So this is a false excuse. I hang up on people. They are kids. They are stupid. They are insulting. They are just uh, wasting our time. I have to repeat the question a thousand times to make them answer the question. And at the end, they, answer. they don't answer. So I hang up on them. Do you remember what happened last time with this uh, guy, Ultimate Fart? I have to hang up on him. He's stupid. He's very insulting. He's very rude. I challenge you, I challenge you to show me where that says in the Quran, uh, obey the prophet, you are a liar. I got you. I said, Abdul, it's in front of you. It's in front of your eyes. Where in the Quran it says, no, in the Quran it says, obey Allah and the messenger. That doesn't make any difference. So what if I show it to you? It says, obey the messenger and obey Allah. 
So if we put them first or all second, it will make a difference. Okay, we can show it to you. Any Mohammedan? Any Muslim? Anyone want to help us to kiss the black stone and receive salvation? The only religion, if you kiss a black stone in it, your sin is erased. It's called Islam. And yet they accuse everybody that they are not pagan. And we are the pagan. Do you remember the conversation I have in the chat with the Muslim website? I said to the guy in the chat, oh, by the way, why, why, uh, why the prophet, he kissed the black stone? Took him five minutes to answer, and he said, because it's holy. And I said, okay, and why it's holy? Took him five per, per minute to answer, and he said, because the prophet kissed it. <laughs> I mean, look at, the, look, at, look at the genius answers. Why the prophet kissed the black stone? Because it's holy. Okay, why it's holy? Because the prophet kissed it. Anyone can come with better answer from the black stone kissers? And then we find that the black stone, if you touch it, it will erase your sin. This is why I have sin. I have no sin. I touch a lot of black stones. Man, I used to do a lot of hiking. I spent the day hiking. Once I was hiking, and right away there was a snake in front of me. I took a hike right away when I saw it. <laughs> like imagine you are hiking, now you have your hand up, you put your hand in the rock, and you want to get your head up, and then boing, a snake head coming in. <laughs> I took a hike and fell down. <laughs> I jumped right away. Oh boy. Uh. And by the way, the Muslims, when they die, they will see a snake which is bold. A bold snake, brother, in the grave. Who remember the, the video? I, guys, did you download the video? Remember the guy from Pakistan? The one who speak about the punishment of the grave and the snakes in the grave? Remember? Hmm. You should watch this video. You will die laughing. Uh, so what, we have no Muslims left? What happened to the Muslims? Jesus is not in the Torah at all. Just like Muhammad was not in it. Uh, Abdul, I don't know, you are looking for a smart, uh, smart idiot. Well, isn't it the Torah speak about, or let's say the, the uh, David, isn't it David? And let me show you here the conversation. The Messiah, he said to the Jews, you are saying Jesus is not right? Okay. The Messiah, he said to the Jews, what do you say of Christ? Christ is said, what are you saying about the Messiah? Whose son is he? They, they were saying to him, he is the son of David. He said to them, and how did David by the Spirit call him the Lord Jehovah? For he said, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I place your enemy under your feet. If therefore David call him the Lord Jehovah, how is he his son? And no man could give him an answer. So when this guy, he says, Jesus does not exist in the Torah. Eh. Bad news to you. The, the Jews until now, they are waiting for the Messiah. So if the Messiah does not exist in the Torah, because the Messiah is the Jesus. If you say, no, he's not, well, this is your problem.
Don't get married, okay? Your wife, she will exchange you for Gucci. Anything from Gucci. She will go to Gucci, she said, give me a shoe, I will give you my husband. They would say, we don't take, uh, you know, we don't take useless stuff. You have to take us something valuable. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? I don't want you to love me, my friend. Love yourself first. Save yourself. You will go to hell if you don't believe in Christ. And if you say that in the Torah or in the Old Testament there is no nothing about Christ, uh, this is because you are deceiving yourself. All the books is about the coming of Christ. So you are just fooling yourself. Do we have any uh, Muslim? Any Muhammadan? CP is anti-Gucci. No, I'm not anti-Gucci. If you give it to me for free, I will take it. Trust me, I will take it, no problem. But I will try to sell it again, you know? Because it's a waste of money. It's a lot of money for what? What I will do with it? You know? What is the difference between a pant you wear for ten dollars and the other one will cost you a thousand? Who care? See, people who they see themselves with the clothing, they have nothing except the clothing or the money. So, if I see myself only exist if I'm wearing expensive clothing, nice perfume, jewels, jewelry, driving expensive car, that's mean I have no life. Actually, I don't. Uh, I don't have. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I like to have a nice house, like in front of a, a view of a mountain. I will love that. That is worth it. A uh, uh, nice balcony in the beach. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, save your money for something useful. So one day you grow old and you enjoy your life. Reading books, enjoying the view, something useful. A, a piece of a cloth. What you would do with it? You wear it once, twice. You, th you are throwing money in the garbage. Sad guru, he don't like Gucci. Yeah, but he spent his summer in USA. <laughs> you know, he's very humble. Sad guru, he is very humble. So he fly in the most expensive seat and he go to the most expensive hotel and he own a very nice villa. But brother, he didn't wear Gucci because Gucci didn't make Indian clothes. I mean, all those who speak about how humble they are, they live in the most expensive houses, they have the most fancy life, and they claim that they are humble. For me, I don't mind to have a big villa. Give me a big villa, I will take it. Why not? Nice garden. I don't like swimming pool, by the way. I hate them. Why want to swim in a swimming pool? Swimming pool is a stupid thing, actually. Uh, I wonder if you were born a Muslim. No, my friend, I was a smart since my childhood. Call yourself a Muslim prince and make a channel to attack a Christianity. I wonder if you were born a Muslim, would you call yourself a Muslim prince and attack a Christianity? And what? That's very deep, my friend. You know what, Anwar? I think I'm going to make you admin from now on when I am not live on air. So from now on, you are admin when there's no chat. That's it. I hired you. Look guys, look what Anwar, Anwar he was thinking, sitting in his chair. Hmm. You know, there's some people, they are deep thinkers. You cannot deny that. I mean, they think, they think really deep. So Anwar, hmm, he was squeezing it. I mean, don't take me wrong. He squeezed something good. So I wonder, I wonder how, I wonder why, if you were born a Muslim, you are going to attack the fly? What the heck is that? Brother, you know in Christianity they don't promise you endless penis, my friend. If a Christianity promised endless penis, I would do. They don't promise me a woman her ass is one mile. That's scary, scaring the hell of me. I mean, women with a small ass scare the hell of you. Imagine one mile. What if she fought in your face? 
Are you smoking a cigarette? <laughs> Don't you know that farting is a flammable? Oh, Lord have mercy. In order to attack Christianity, you have to give me a reason. Jesus says, love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. How I can complain about that? But anyway, keep thinking, keep thinking. You know, you are the kind who keep thinking about the flight to the point he miss it. You know, just sit in the chair in the airport and think about your flight. Um...